Hello, everyone, Woo! and welcome to Dragon Talk. How's it going? I am Greg Tito, and I'm joined by Shelly Mazanobel. Hi, Greg Tito. How are you? Good. How are you? We have an amazing guest so I think excited. you are excited to talk My about. My spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> I love Christina so much. <laughs> We have Christina. That's real life. You like me. That's so crazy. And I love that there's like, yay, above your head right now. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys exciting. are getting all like full me today. Sorry. Good. I love it. I love it. So Christina Ariel Tigner, I'm saying that for the first time out loud. Is that right? Christina Ariel Tigner. That is, I, I just got married. Um, it'll be a year on next Tuesday. Congratulations. Congratulations. You've made yay. it to a year yep. almost. That's we did, man. It's great. I like that dude. That's why I married him. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You did the right. You did the right thing, then. Yep. Yep. So you so you took uh, you you combined names and and the last names. Is that what that is? No, his last name was Tigner. Mine was I was Christina Ariel Glenn for about thirty one years, and then I was Christina Ariel Tigner. But I love my middle name so much that I was not gonna. I I was not giving it up. Like I was nice. Tina Turner about my middle name. It's like you're not getting my name. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's just who I am Chris, like I love to because when I was like five I was like okay so Little Mermaid came out in 1989 I was born in 1986 but I went to school and told everyone that I was named after Little Mermaid and I got like a year's worth of people to believe that my name was Ariel and I was named after a mermaid in a movie that came out after I was born <laughs> Storytelling. That makes See? perfect. As long as you say it enough times, you know, people will believe it. It's, it's, it's all in your delivery. I believe it. It's true. I totally believe it. I'm Although I can't believe Little Mermaid came out in 1989. Oh my god. It did. That is a long time ago now that you think about yeah. it. Yeah. Moana's body is the image that they used to draw Ariel. What? I didn't know that. Sam? Just like Tom Cruise was Aladdin, Alyssa Milano was the body for... Tom Cruise was Aladdin? <laughs> Tom Cruise was the body My mind is for blown. Aladdin. What? No. I did not know that either. Wait, is Aladdin is he a shorter gentleman? He is a shorter gentleman, right? He what? was just one jump ahead of the bread line, and then it was one swing ahead of the sword. So, you know, you just got to do what you can do. <laughs> wow. No, I didn't know Alyssa Milano. Well, it's similar to your story, though, of like telling people that. Like, I met a whole bunch of people when I went to high school, and they, I just, uh, 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 inst there was people who knew me from my old thing. And we met like 40 new kids. And all those new kids, I introduced myself as Bob Jinglehopper. <laughs> and they totally bought it. I just kept, I was like, yeah, my name's Bob How Jinglehopper. How is that not your nickname? I, well, it was. It's actually, it's my nickname on like most of my uh, uh, online stuff uh, was from that because it was, that was just like my, my pseudonym. And people still to this day will refer to me as Bob, mostly as a joke because they know it's not my real name, but they will still call me Bob sometimes. What? But it works with John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith if you ever wanted to like apply it to music. Like it's pretty much perfect. Yeah. It really that was good. Yeah. That was that was the inspiration there. I told was um, really? Yeah, I was. <laughs> I told I mean, this guy that I his name was Christopher that I was magic. Like just you were See, magical. like even then even like at like at third grade I wanted to be a sorceress. I'm like, I'm magic and he said, Oh, okay, cool and then he I granted a wish i guess i told him he could have a dog or something and he came to me the next day and he goes guess what when i woke up there was a puppy in my bed and i was like oh i know and then i walked home like holy shit i'm magic <laughs> <laughs> like, i'm seriously really a magic <laughs> but what perfect timing that, that, that he, he got a puppy well, at I, the time. I still to this day That's think funny. like maybe you were did we it. both liars i think she did or it. was i seriously magic like it's one of the two Maybe Did he was, he was either lying <laughs> or I made it happen? What do you think, Christina? Um, one, I think she did it because I knew she could do anything. Anyone that watches Real Housewives knows their true power. I can't so they believe don't care. they I'm, don't care and they care enough about being who they are to be like, This is who I am, and I do magics and I make puppies appear in bed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, I'm gonna flip this table and I'm gonna Please? call you a hoo. <laughs> In um, fifth grade, I changed my name to Esmeralda, so my parents get this phone call. They're like, oh, we need to talk to you about your daughter, Essie. And she's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, no, your daughter, Essie. She's like, who is Essie? And they're like, your daughter, Esmeralda Glenn. We just need to talk to you because, um, yeah, we're going on a field trip, and she didn't return her form. My mom is like, why do these people think your name? And I was like, oh, because you got married, and you know how like you legally changed your name when you get married. So I told the teacher that I legally changed my name when my mom got married because obviously you can do that, Of right? course. And I love that you not only changed your name, but you also gave yourself a nickname of your new fake name. 
as it was Meralda. on public forums at my school. Wow. I'm not kidding. That is good. I'm extra to the extra level. Yeah. Well, you were invested in your character. So, yeah, speaking of, so, Christina, you only started playing Dungeons & Dragons a little while ago. Is that right? But it feels like you were meant to be playing Dungeons & Dragons. Right. You were playing it all along. I know. Actually, last night I handed my husband a D20 and said, roll for seduction. (laughs) 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 It's a real story, actually. But um, He rolled a one, didn't he? He rolled a four. (laughs) Um, So we, um, no, I literally, I was... I wanted to play when I was younger, but um, there's a whole lot of things that come with being a black nerd. And one of those things include people saying, you can't play Dungeons and Dragons, it's not for you. And also the Christian angle of it, because mm-hmm. we were in Columbus, Georgia in the deep South, no one's gonna let you play a game where you invite demons into their house. Right. Like, Same. it's like, oh, yep. you're playing with the demons. And it's like, no, I wanna play a game where I create stories and I play within my imagination and create wild new worlds. Demons. Like, right. that's all they hear is, like, demons. So, Same. yeah, I ended up, luck, like, falling into this. My my life has been super weird. I moved here from Georgia to L.A. four years ago, and everything that's happened has been weird. Um, weird like, in a here. good way, right? Yeah. No, like, weird in a good way. Like, I literally sat down one night, and I was like, I'm really unhappy. And the next day, my job went out of business in Georgia. Like, I sold cars, and I was a bartender. And the next day, like... It went out of business. I was able to work this shift that gave me enough money to move cross country to LA and do what I needed to do. Met my husband within a month of moving and then like got engaged within a year after my wedding, like everything ramped up. I started, I did with the library bards with Xander Genere and uh, Bonnie Gordon. I did their Star Trek video at the end of right after my wedding last year. And everything that's happened since has just been since that. And then I met Satine Phoenix, who's a magical unicorn human. Yep. And she's like, I'm going to be your fairy Dungeons and Dragons mother. And I'm like, this is amazing. And here I am. <laughs> so did you, there's so much there. Did you move to LA to pursue acting? No, I actually would tell people, I was like, the only thing that I would ever want to do is do one great sci-fi role that got me onto the convention circuit so I could cosplay forever for free. Nice. But, <laughs> like, I didn't have any intentions to do any of this, like, in my heart of hearts, yes, but not that I would say to anyone and have them say, like, you're crazy for believing this. And But I was, like, all the time believing all this stuff, like, what if this is magic and everything's happening as it's supposed to? And then on January, like, on my birthday, I went to go see Wicked for the first time, and I was really excited about it. My husband, now then not husband, surprised me with tickets to see Wicked, and I saw Patrick Stewart sitting on the corner of oh. by the by the Pantages. He was filming a show, and I was like, "This is a sign." All my signs are Star Trek related. I got my job at the car lot because I went in full Lieutenant Ahura uniform and just no showed. Okay, and was like, I was like, "Hey." There was a sign that said now hiring and I was like, it's a sign. And I was like, I'm going to be your number one salesperson. And they were like, OK, weirdo, come back in normal clothes and we'll talk. Uh, <laughs> and were you their number one salesperson? I was not the number one, but I was the number one female because I was the only female. There but you I did go. Sell 10 cars a you month. take those wins when you get them. Nailed it. Yep. Nailed I it. I, met the, I, I went over the minimum is like six cars a month and I was selling like 10 to 12 because I'd be in the car on a test drive like, oh, my God, look, there's a little plug in the back. You can do your hair. And I was discovering <laughs> stuff when they were. So it was like, don't do it while you're driving because you can die. But I, at least like flat out, you can die like, if you're running late. I would totally buy a car from you. I would too. <laughs> you're so enthusiastic. It's like, of course, this, you know, a used car. This is the car of your dreams. Just. Get it, it is, and always take look. Take your luggage, and if you have kids, like take your luggage and take like if you have car seats, if you have pack and plays, always take that stuff and oh, feel yeah. like bring that stuff that you would travel with, and make sure that you have adequate trunk space, and then some. Mm. Important Good point. Important tip. When somebody rolls into the car dealership with a pack and play and luggage, you're like, that's a serious buyer. That's my that's my people. That's them. <laughs> and they also listen to Dragon Talk. Clearly, that's where they got that tip from. So how did you how did you meet Satine? Um, so Mobius Strip, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him from the interwebs. He, I have um, seen him on the interwebs. He's, he's fantastic. He created the infamous Wonder Woman gif of me that goes from me to my Nubia to Gal Gadot's Diana. So we became friends on the internet and then he was like, I want you to meet Satine. And I went to lunch with her a few like months and months ago and it was the greatest lunch I've ever had because it was just like. <laughs> She's such a real human. Like, she's such a real person to talk to and so kind and so open. And there's no, like, pretense. And to we started talking about Dungeons & Dragons. And it was something I'd always wanted to do. Like, I wanted to play this game 
so bad, but there was always something that was like, you can't do this, you can't do this. Mm. And it's like, now I'm 32, I can do whatever I want to, I'm grown. So like, <laughs> I'm gonna play Dungeons and Dragons and it is like, has been a very life consuming thing for me. And you guys have been such a huge part of that. Like I listened to you on the elliptical for an hour a day. Like, <sighs> and then, like we listened to you in the car, I was picking up my stepson from school and he's like, they talk about sirens of the realms, but you are not, you're not famous enough to be on Dragon Talk. Oh, oh. surprise, kiddo. He goes, but if you do talk to Dragon Talk, and this, Luke, when we listen to this in the car, I want you to hear this. He said, can you get me information on the stream of many eyes? And he wants to know everything about it. He's been listening wow. to this, like, as you guys dole out. The, he's five. And oh. he's only five. Like, he loves it. Yes. That's great. You better watch your language. What's now, his name? Yeah. His name is Luke. He's five years old and he loves, he listens to Dragon Talk with me in the car. Like he loves it and it's great because he just, he takes the information and he's like, it's like a podcast kind of like Story Pirates, but not for kids. Oh, you guys listen to Story Pirates Story too? Story Pirates. Pirates is so good. I love Story Pirates. It's, oh. We listen to it in the, we listen to podcasts in the car and like talk about imagination and stuff. So it's like, yeah. it's really great to have like, like Lori should know is one of the great things in the car for us is like, Oh, like, listen, like you're learning stuff and he learns new stuff to play. He takes it to the playground and plays at school and they like have new monsters each week. So it's cool. Oh, that's so great. Future D and D player right there. I know. Right. Well, hello, yeah. Luke. Your stuff nice. mom is actually cool enough to be she on Dragon Talk. She is totally famous enough. She totally is. Yeah. And you should always listen to her. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Oh, that's so. I love Story Pirates too. Have you, do you know about Story Pirates? It's basically they, they get uh, um, uh, stories from kids. They write them, and they're those <gasps> really ridiculous, imaginative things that they write, and then they create sketches from them. Sometimes they just read the stories, uh, and then they do a what? song. They like do a, like a song interpretation of them. It's it's amazing. It's really good. Lee, um, what's the name of it? Lee? I forget his last name, but he was the guy that was the page in uh, Thirty Rock. <gasps> Uh, he's Kenneth? One of, yes, Kenneth. He's one yeah, of, uh, yeah. I forget his name. Lee something. But uh, yeah, no. So, oh, no way. Yeah, so he. This is a podcast? It's a podcast, and it comes out every week, and it's great for kids. You should get it for kids. You Quinn. submit a story? You can. You, uh, my girl, she's seven. She's she's like, I want to write a story. And so she's been like furiously writing stories to try to submit into Story Pirates. Quinn's um, oh. preschool just did a, a story for all the kids. Like, they went around in a circle and. You got to start the story, and then the next kid did the next sentence, and the next and next. Yeah, it was really cute because all the boys were like, "And then a T Rex came and he killed everyone," and then the girls are like, "Except for the unicorn, she survived, and <laughs> she sprinkled glitter in the air, and another T Rex came and stepped on the unicorn and ate all her glitter, until a fairy jumped out of a flower." And she said, no more T-Rexes ever, except for the one that comes out and farts on her flower. Ho, ho, ho. I was like, well, I can certainly tell, like, who, what, the boys part of the story my, and the girls part of the story. As soon as my girls enter that, though, they'll be like, butts, butts, butts. Really? And farts all over that. No, oh, the yeah. girls were all about magic, fairies, glitter, mm. and the boys were like, farts, <laughs> Star Wars, T-Rex, killing. <laughs> that was Quinn. <laughs> Well, we got to see. That's why I got to get my girls in there and mix that up a little bit. Yeah. Break the um, So you had wanted to play Dungeons and Dragons for so long, and then you met Satine, and you were like, "All right, let, now let's play." So that was it. That was your first foray yeah. into D and D. My for, like my first like actual like finding out that I could play that it was feasible for me to do. Like I of course like I I'm in the nerd community hardcore. I'm a cosplayer first of all, um, and. Like, this is my little world. So I got to, like, I'd see, like, the surfaces of it. And it's, like, Critical Role and all these things. And I'd hear about it. So I started, like, watching it. And it's, like, oh, I can make up nonsense on a whim and then get <laughs> stories. And then it was, like, but I was, like, but how am I ever going to get into it? I was, like, it's not going to work out for me to, like, like uh, who am I going to call? And just be, like, hey, who wants to play this game with me? And so, like, Satine calls me, like, after our meeting. And she's, like, hey, would you like to play? And... She invited me to play with Sirens, and now, like, I have my character, and, like, it's happening. Like, I'm playing Dungeons & Dragons, and it's awesome. And it's, like, now my life has, like, gone down this Dungeons & Dragons spiral of, like, Dragon Talk and Dragon Delve and reading, like, and I got, like, Morden Cadence. I got Morden Cadence yesterday, so nice. I've been, like, I, I really love the disclaimer in it. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> That's a funny they're, one. They're it's a good funny. one. So, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm... 
I was scared. I was like, people are going to be like, oh, like, who's this weird new person that doesn't like they you don't have this history. But it's like your history has to start somewhere as far as I'm concerned. And so my history just so happens to start with a brilliant DM who's imaginative, a great cast of women that are strong and hilarious and we get to make up stuff. And I don't know if you've watched, my character likes to make up really random nonsense. And I had a death scene that was a lay Miz death scene, but I wasn't dying, I was healing myself, but I decided to be extra. So I did like this whole like eponine, like don't you fret. Sure. <laughs> 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 I was like, I just wanted to die a little, but not really, and just yeah, it was great. That yeah. Is... yeah. <laughs> so the first time you played Dungeons and Dragons was on the live stream. Is that true? It is. That's crazy How to think about. How did you learn? Like, what was your introduction? That did you just? I mean, well, I guess let's. How did you create a character? School of Dungeons and Dragons. All right, I like guess I went to the. I would like to go to that. Portrait, like sit down with her, like understand like what it is like character building like reading and then just doing independent study of it i'm a very voracious reader so i just found everything that i could i went into D beyond and just went ham on all things dungeons and dragons and then you tell us about your your character how did you create her what was her what was the inspiration behind your character um i listened to like i went through and i was reading all the character details and i looked for a character that like rem not necessarily reminded me of me, but it was like the me, like the imagined me, like the heightened me. So of course it was an Asimar cleric bard and her name is Ariza and she is a penchant for busting out in random musical numbers out of nowhere. <laughs> so like, that's like literally my first episode was we had to come up with a diversionary tactic. So it's like me and Girasol are trying to escape and then it's like the slavers are up on the stage and we've made our way through this and we're trying to get over to the waterfall. Everyone's freaking out, but we have to make our way through this, but we need to save the slaves. So the slaves have to go the way that they're going. What are we going to do? So we stop and she just starts beating on this drum in the middle and we're just like, you will all suffer. Eventually I will have my vengeance. Don't you hear how sweet this sounds? But know that I'm going to kill you. And it turns into this murder song that's like a warning as we walk through and it's like I'm threatening you that and it's like I didn't even do like Radiant Light until like three episodes. <laughs> I didn't want to do it, but I had these really dope feather like cloak that I wear, so I'm really excited about it. Nice. Because feathers and Dope, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that you can uh, sing. I don't I think know. me or Shelly have either of those. Either, either of us have that talent. You were just Not like even a little. making up nonsense, as you said. But it's the most beautiful sounding nonsense <laughs> I've ever heard. Thanks. <laughs> that was I beautiful. I like my nonsense has a point. <laughs> Thread. If I had a world of my own, it would be all nonsense. Nothing would be as it was because everything would be as it was. <sighs> can oh you God. do a Alice rendition of... Too? Money can't buy you class by the Countess. Money, Money can't buy you class. No, when they realize how was it? Money can't buy you class. <laughs> Money can't buy you class. Oh my God! All against his life. <laughs> oh, do you want to listen? My kitty's like a python. To tick in like a time bomb, limited edition, got to try it with no try on. Oh. So, I, can, I have a playlist that is nothing but Bravo Liberty songs. Oh my I have God. to for the party. Don't give me some girl. Oh, yeah. That's a classic. That is a classic right there. What about Melissa's song? She only had like one little quick little. Yeah. It's I in mean, last. It was such a blip that I don't really like. I don't know that I even remember what it was. But Erica Jane changed the game, though. Like, I mean, Candy Burris, of course, was established. But yes. Erica Jane, as far as, like, I'm going to sing my first song that you really know of here. And then she comes out with, like, how many bleeps do I give? And you're like, girl, yeah. Yep, yep. And those little outfits. Mm -hmm. The latex outfit. Oh, my the God. The, in the Germany? Revive. Yes. <laughs> it was such a moment. It really that was. That housewife's moment. You missed it, Greg. I missed it. You that, is a, that was a table flip. That was a Judice, Judice. <laughs> was this was this the New Jersey one? Oh, oh no, it was Beverly, Beverly Hills. Hills. Erica oh. Jane, Erica Girardi had worn this outfit, and it was like red latex and a black latex skirt. And she's like, and this guy like rides past <laughs> her when she's serving these looks and like doing the stuff, and she stops and looks at the camera, breaks the fourth wall for like the first time in Housewives history in a real way, and she's like. 
It was so good. It, really was. it was amazing. So tell me about the uh, Real Housewives D and D role playing game that you're you're cooking up. Okay, this could so be good. This, I have to find people who care because everyone every time I bring it up, people are like no. You got one. one. You, you got one, one person. One person cares. Uh, Shelly cares, and you can Shelly. You are my Dorinda. Like, let's make this happen. I am your like, your like, ride or die you. drunk Dorinda. I don't know if that Dorinda. Yeah. Oh, she's the best. You're drunky two shoes. It's drunky two shoes. Dorinda Look, two shoes. Yeah. So how does it work? How does this How does this game work? So hardcore from the first episode. We've got Luann with her wig. Like we've got all this stuff, and we still have Luann to get arrested to look forward to. Like this oh, I is know. The season. And do you know, like they go on some crazy boat ride, and they all get violently ill and think they're gonna die. Yes. Oh, is that why you don't want to go on boats? No, but it reaffirms it. <sighs> totally. I love that you know the gossip behind it too. Oh, I read it all the time. Yep, yep. My mom, actually, my mom doesn't know how to do that much on, like, the internet. But she has a Pinterest board that she pins me Housewives articles to. And so every now and then I'll get a notice that's like, Judy pinned something on your Housewives board. But she doesn't know Pinterest is public. And, like, people started (laughs) following her. And she was like, who are these people that are following my Housewives board? I'm like, Mom, you're, like, a great source of news. So she's like, you know, she's people are following her. People are following. She's got like six followers on Pinterest. <laughs> Freaked her out, but now she pins for all of us. So that's where I get my best scoop. My mom. Your mom's gonna be my new Tamra Tattles. Like I'm here for this. Yes, she is. Oh, reality tea. I love all the all the tea, all of it. All I told you that. that's why I come to you guys. You guys are the Dungeons and Dragons tea. That's us. That's us. See. So how did, how would this game work? The the game you were talking about. Okay, so the game would work. You would bring in each person, like you would have someone from each cast. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like there would be like your like your HBIC who would be the Lisa Vanderpump, and then you would have. But I would want to do this character who was like a hybrid Lisa Vanderpump, Erica Jane, and she was like she would do the songs, and she's like the diva, but also she's like, "Don't mess with me. I'm not here for your nonsense." Yeah. Like. This- so each person would gum and you would try to like heighten the drama. So it would be like, instead of rolling for like dexterity or strength, you would roll for drama and it All would right. see like how dramatic the interaction would be. So it'd be like, okay, so the housewives come together and they're sitting and we're doing the meal. And you know how there's, oh yeah, the, everyone's around the table. It's all of the cast and they're there. But I think it would be really great if you took people from like each, like each RPG show and stuff like that. And you would pull them in and they would represent each city. Mm. It would be like the real housewife of critical role, the real housewife (laughs) of Inkwell society. And like, you would bring them all in. Yeah. Like they would have this sit down and it'd be like, so what's good. (laughs) (laughs) The whole thing is just them being like, really, really? And so by like the third, really, that's when people start to roll because we got to see what's going to happen. What's the problem? Are they fighting over the fact you make up the drama? You make up, was it someone talked to someone's husband or someone saw that someone's husband was in the tabloids and someone called the post Mm -hmm. and told the post what was happening in their relationship. So you just like keep heightening. You don't talk to the post. You know. I don't know what the post is. You don't talk to the, the post. New York Post. Like they call oh, in, draw, the post. call on each other to the tabloids and just, like leak stories. Yeah. Oh my you god. Yeah. If if your D and D character uh, did that, that'd be really mean too. Yeah, it's probably the drama. Probably is something that happened anywhere from the day before to three years ago. That yeah. has to be brought up again. Right. Yeah. But it works if you have the characters like it like with Sirens. If we did like a one off where it was like the Real Housewives of Everon or whatever, and it's like all it would be about was the confessionals. Yeah. Like I would want to see the confessionals, and it's like oh. I think we're bonding, and I think we've got to this point. So you like ghosts who's thinking that you're bonding, and then you splash and arise. It's like we're not bonding. <laughs> like and you that just, would like, be a, actually a really good addition to kind of streaming in general, though, is like having those one-on-one character moments. You need the, the diary. The run. confessional moments, because they're, yeah. I mean, it's really great when everyone is in a, an, in the table and kind of, you know, storytelling together. But I like having those like one-on-one type of, uh, you know, like a series of those that we, then we could cut up or whatever and put together with uh, the actual live play of, of the story that's happening. I think that that'd would be really be fun. Cool. I think that would be. Especially if you have like sub like subplots for your character yeah. that you've worked on in your head and they've been like sitting there and stewing, but you can't really portray that when you're trying to like you've got to wait. They're waiting for the DM to tell the story. You're moving everything along. Yeah. But then you still add you cut away at the end and it's like all these like 
confessionals of how they were really feeling in that moment and how oh they really God. felt about that weird gnome guy. Oh yeah, you could actually do them all at the end, right? You could actually just, all right, so you play your normal session and then at the end you just go through and uh, have, you know, and they won't be long and they're talking like, you know, two, three minutes long of like, what did you think about what happened in that episode? Or, you know, do you want to throw shade on this person or that person for what they did? You gotta they, be like a real did? producer, though. This is like your moment. Because you have to ask the real leading questions to get the answer that you want. It's true. You're right. The character of, yes. of, so of like who's I, asking Every those time I, I see a confessional, I always try to think, like, what did the producer really ask? Because that's 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 the interesting part. Yeah. Like, I always imagine the that they ask like, really awful questions like, so, you know, which one of your cast members do you hate the most and why? Or they just be like, wow, like, Erica really seemed super sensitive about being told that she has pretend See, amnesia. Do you be, think she really does have amnesia? We need you. Do not we need you to do that ever role. Tell me I have amnesia. Oh my well, god, do you watch you have to repeat it? You have to repeat the question first. Yes. They make you repeat the question so oh, like, yep, they really do. are saying like do the I think she has pretend yeah. amnesia? Yeah, maybe a little. Do you watch That's the Real Housewives of Dallas? Oh, I'm not a Dallas, but do you watch Potomac? Oh my god, I love them. They were like a surprise hit for night. me. What? You watched last night? I didn't. I'm a little behind in my, my housewives. I didn't see last like, night. The Grand Dame kicked them out of her party. Like she called security and had them kicked out of her party. Oh man, this is gonna be good. She also ha held a press release and invited them all to come. She didn't like feed them. She like didn't feed conference? them. Like that was in a restaurant, but she gave them no food and only <laughs> like a little like pitcher of water and a couple of glasses and just had like a, a press. Release. When when do the goblins attack? Oh, uh, they they do. They attack at least <laughs> seven times an episode. It there's actually someone that comes and sprinkles dust that makes them fight. Like there's yes, a it's like on a dime. And it heightens your anger and it heightens your feelings and emotions and it feeds on it and sits over in the corner and just watches them like good, good. <laughs> and they get mm -hmm. angrier and angrier and sit in this corner and you just watch like why are these women randomly fighting out of nowhere and you realize they're possessed. Yes, they are. And all the people in the back of the restaurant that are just like customers, they just sit there and just eat and don't look up and don't don't worry about the table full of screaming women in front of you. They're all but, but wine glasses. They're all throwing. doppelgangers of each other too. Like, what if the people that you thought was the bad people were actually uh, uh, people who were playing as the part of that person? See, there's lots of plot holes and plot not plot holes, but plot things that you can string oh, along to make this just use this in your D and D game. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yes. Trying to bring it back to D and D somehow, guys. No, oh no, I'm sorry. Seriously, <laughs> we could do. We, I'm saying, we could do that, or we could have like a D and D game that was like a soap opera, but everything is super soapy. So everyone yes. comes in and it's like <gasps> roll dexterity. <laughs> 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 so, you put a healing potion in a champagne glass. Everybody <laughs> knows it goes in a wine glass. How dare you smash! <laughs> That was my magic wine glass <laughs> from my you don't know mother. You find goblets in this town. <laughs> you can make it work. You, I, I, we can, like Tim Gunn, we can make it work. You can totally make it work. Yeah, I and think everybody we can. needs to have like a trigger word, and the other, um, and the producer's job is to kind of get the other players to say, to those say words. that trigger word, so yeah. that so that you have your freak out. Like Erica, like when she when she loses her temper okay. and she's like. All of a sudden, she'll just be like talking and super cool, and she'll go, "What did you say to me? <laughs> Do not ever talk about my son." When did like, she get Whoa. possessed by? Asmodeus? That's what I mean. It just it happened in Hong Kong. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's when you that's what happens when you roll disadvantage. Like all of a sudden it's like your dice hits the floor and it's like disadvantage. What do you mean I got disadvantage? <laughs> no, I didn't. You're disadvantage. Don't Your you mom is ever. disadvantage. <laughs> she gets crazy. And poor Teddy was like, okay, I, I didn't know. Okay. Who's who's Teddy? Teddy's another housewife. John, John Cougar Mellencamp's John Cougar daughter. Mellencamp's daughter. Wait, what? She was way too nice for them. John Cougar Mellencamp's daughter, and she's like a housewife. There's so many but layers. She was like too nice. The old Tom Sandoval. Oh my God. So was he the <laughs> the body double for Tom Cruise? Wait, what? I'm confused. Aladdin. <laughs> Come on. So, so Dungeons and Dragons is a really great I'm game. Actually, I think I'm actually going to listen to this episode of Dragon Talk. You should. This is, you could should. be it's my first stuff. ever episode. I feel like we need to tell your, your, your stepson about what's happening with the stream of many eyes before right. we lose that thread. 
Oh, so yeah, I'm really excited about you know more than I do. Like you can't tell you hear how much I talk and nobody telling me nothing. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited though. Like I'm literally like I listen to you guys like just waiting for like any kind of like spill of knowledge. He's I went and I met with uh, Rudy Butenberg this morning. Yeah. And I'm just like, so what do you know? And he's like, no, no. <laughs> that makes a vault. He is a vault. He is a vault. <laughs> keeping it. That's keeping good. it locked good to up. Know. But we're we're yeah. telling more and more people now it's gonna be awesome. You are gonna be performing uh uh on Saturday, June second, uh to start off, right, with Satine as uh and the Sirens of the Realms. You guys are gonna uh kick off hey. the Saturday Do stuff. You know this? Playing you know Dungeons this? and Dragons. You're gonna be there. It's gonna be I know awesome. We're I know, but I know we're playing Saturday, so I do know that. Yeah. Um, and and uh, we're gonna be. Uh, you guys are gonna be actually singing, I think, at least a little bit uh, during the stream awesome. of, of Many Eyes, which is gonna be awesome. Having uh, Jason Charles Miller play. I keep on doing this because so you know it's guitar. Uh, <laughs> it's also the Fairly Well. Yes, exactly. Uh, singing some of that stuff, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be crazy because there will be. A set. I was just gonna say, wait till you see the set. Oh, oh my god! I saw the pictures and I flipped out. It's, I'm so ex- like, I'm literally so excited. It's not even funny. Like when I saw the pictures, the team like posted it, and I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> it's like, it's like you imagine like playing pretend when you're little, and then like all the stuff that you imagine like yeah. showed up. Like we're literally playing pretend, and then all of a sudden it's like boom. Like all this stuff is real. Exactly. That's that's what we are trying to get across, right? That like you know we we so much of Dungeons and Dragons is about the theater of the mind and imagining stuff, and and Sirens of the Realms blends that by having so much costumes and 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 live performance and and the art of it. Uh, we're gonna take that to the next level with sets, real live uh, non-player characters interacting with the player characters, uh, tons of. Cosplayers, uh, sword fighting, uh, people, blacksmiths. What? There will be all type of uh, extravaganza blacksmith? type stuff going blacksmith? on. Yeah, I didn't hear this. Not part. plural, just maybe one. <laughs> uh, Doing it's gonna be what? great. People uh, in in costume being their characters what? and embodying uh, the whole the whole sets. It's Are gonna you gonna be wear really a amazing. I will be wearing a producer costume. It may look look like, like exactly what it, you're wearing. Yes, exactly. Are you gonna have like a headphone like this? I really like, do hope I have a headset. I want to have a headset so that I can. It's the talk best to you way like to get out of a conversation you don't want. I, to I, I'm sorry. Hey. I gotta uh, go. I gotta, I gotta go. go. Sorry. Yep. You wear like black contact lenses, like blackout lenses, Ooh. and then just go and you're like a flesh suit. <gasps> That's a great idea. And wear yourself as a suit. <laughs> <laughs> so gross. And then, when, like, My if I get hot, suit. it'll be outside. <laughs> was that a Men in Black uh, reference? Oh, it would be cooler if it was. Like Edgar suit. Yeah. Don't you remember that Vincent D'Onofrio plays the guy who gets like possessed, oh. and he's like the bug that's in in the Vincent D'Onofrio. Nope. Yeah. No. But then his wife says the same thing. It's was like, he it's on like the someone was wife? wearing an Edgar, like, a suit like of Edgar, an Edgar suit. Oh. You remember that? You like did the you did the accent and everything. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I would be wearing a Greg Tito suit. That's the, and that's we the have goal. a new episode tomorrow, by the way. A new episode uh, of Sirens? Yes. The teen is out of town because tomorrow is her birthday. So happy birthday to our unicorn princess, Angel Baby. Happy I love you. birthday. <laughs> it's like a space pirate crossed with an angel. Yeah. She She's is, but like with perfect winged liner. Oh, my God. The <laughs> liner. Seriously. Like, and I, perfect I hair, I ombre like, hair. I mean, like, dude, it's like, I was like, I want to just do like a ballad of Satine. And that's going to be like my next great thing. I'm like, I would learn to play a lute for you. Like, that's yeah. how much I wow. do. That's actually a good line for the song. I would learn to, to play, play the lute, lute for you. you. Not right now, because this is really the bad. The ballad of Satine. <laughs> <And it's> like, <laughs> so if Satine were a real housewife, because they all like schlep a product, hers would be eyeliner. eyeliner. She would have like a makeup line. Funny and thing you should say that because I think she's coming up with a makeup line. Well, there you go. Seriously? Yeah, I think so. Oh. I hope I'm not uh, spoiling that, but I think she is. Oh my God, I'm in. I'm <laughs> in. Make me over. Can I, I'm just going to bring it to like bring it to the set and be like, can you? I don't know how to do Work it. Work your magic. I can't wait for her to be in the office again because I am going to corner her. It's true. I'm going to follow her to the bathroom. People thought you were magical, but I think Satine actually is magical. Oh, well, one guy, Chris... Shade, Greg. Shade. <laughs> in third grade, one guy. You were you were magical in third grade. Yeah. And you're still magical now. That power is still in you. <laughs> when we play D and D. It's right. When you're a sorceress. Yep. Awesome. You're like the Highlander, though. 
You can take out Greg. It's okay. It's okay. I do it. She's tried a few times. We will, we will host our own podcast. There can be only one Dragon Talk. Yeah. The dragon talks no more. I love that you use the remote as a uh, as a as a as a prop. That's good. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm all about. Actually, you should see the prop. My husband made my um my weapon for um the stream of many eyes. So I'm really oh, nice. excited. Oh, no way. Like, painted it and like went and like put all the pieces together. And it's I would like jump over my couch and run and get it for you right now and show you. But I'll just show you when we get to the thing of who's it. That makes sense. It'll keep, save it for the Instagram. I love that he made that for you. I love. He's so dope. Like I dig him. And we're gonna go. We're running off to Vegas for our anniversary right before the stream of Many Eyes. Cool. So we're gonna spend this weekend. We're running off to get married by Elvis. So we're gonna elope for our anniversary because it's the paper anniversary. Is the first year when so oh, we're gonna yep. go, and go see Elvis. That is That's super a great cool. Idea. And then you'll be there for uh, stream of uh, Many Eyes. Starts on June first. 4 p.m. Pacific time. That's where we will get to see all of the sets and everything that we've been making. Uh, all the costumes, the extravaganza will all begin then. A few live performances that night with some uh, interviews with uh, the D&D team. And then you guys kick it off on June 2nd at 10 a.m. Pacific time. You guys are starting it off. What a way to kick 10 it 10 is off. early, I know, but it's going to be... I live in Hollywood, and I'd like from what I... from. From word on the street, I won't have to travel too, too far. So hopefully that's true. It is true. It's not too far. It's uh, it's right in that Hollywood area. Word. You should bring yeah. Luke to come check out the you sets. Should. Uh, I want to. I didn't know if I like would be allowed to, but he's really excited. He's like, do I get to go to the street? And I'm like, oh, absolutely. I don't know if uh, I'll take like see if I can bring him Sunday. He'll be like over the moon about it. That'll be fun. Yep. That'll be fun. <clears throat> I think we're doing it to get the, the look in his eyes. Like we, I want to see it. I yes, want to be like this that. Is, this is the moment when he uh, he gets the D&D love. <laughs> I know that. 20 years from now. Fantastic. You, see, see. you heard it. Yeah. I want to yeah. show you the world. Oh. No, do you, you know what Adam? I flipped out when I was listening to that episode when you started singing like songs from Jesus Christ Superstar? Yes. Like, that was when I became a stone like into it because i was like does is he singing what <laughs> my mind is clear Greg now is a super musical theater nerd I'm not, really i'm just a jesus christ superstar nerd more no, than anything else make, i mean i know a lot other of other references. musicals but i that is the one that i uh will always uh, have d uh, deep in my heart that live performance wasn't it amazing i cried like i, I have bald actual tears it was a um, john legend was fit so, oh my god sarah Bareilles could sing my life so good Oh, it was so great. I was and on like, full on, t like, just tears of joy of how good it was and how well they put together. You cry at the... It was beautiful, though. It Everything. was. Like, I'm like that about Hamilton also, though. Mm -hmm, so I, like, too. like I met Phil Lamar for the first time, and I had changed. So at LACC, I was Alexander Hamilton during the day, and then I changed into Wonder Woman. So I met him dressed as Wonder Woman, but did we did Alexander Hamilton. Like, we did a cabinet oh. battle in the middle of the aisle at LACC. It was fantastic. That's so good. Hashtag goals. <laughs> like, yeah, like you've Phil had a Lamar is like doing Hamilton with you, and he's like he's he's amazing. That is so cool. <laughs> Plus, you got to meet uh, 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 Donald Glover on the on the red carpet for Solo, right? Well, oh no way! Calrissian. I got to meet both Landos. I got to take a picture with Billy D. Williams, who I'd met before. Then Donald Glover, who I hadn't met before, also it was weird. <laughs> they, were like, they pretty much were both like, "Oh hey," and I'm like. You don't remember me. It happened to me at the Avengers thing. Chris Pratt was like, oh, how are you? How's Luke? And da 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 What? Like, you remember? We had met at a liquor store on Christmas Eve. It was great. What? <laughs> and we had this great conversation about, like, magic. And I was like, oh, because I walked up to him and I was like, listen, I'd be remiss if I didn't walk up to you and say that I'm a huge fan. And I watched Guardians of the Galaxy last night and thought to myself, oh, my God, Chris Pratt would probably be the nicest person in the world to meet. And here you are. And I hugged him. Oh, <laughs> like I went Wait. in for the hug. He does seem like he. So you had that nice. random encounter, and then how long later after that did you did you see him again? That he remembered everything. At the Avengers premiere, like it was Christmas Eve to the Avengers premiere, and then Donald Glover I'd met oh. a couple like about a month before I'd met him at the park where they were like playing with the kids and all this kind of stuff. Like it like it was a random encounter. He was there, and then I met him on the red carpet for Solo, and he remembered. And I'm just like I think I'm very forgettable. So no. every time. 
But if he remembers me, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. That is really cool. That he asked questions too. And he was like, and oh, he yeah, remembered no, Luke. Maybe, you know, maybe it's Luke. Luke's got like it's, a lot of charisma. Like book bag. So I had told him about like how he has this little. He's like got a oh, little. Okay, that's he's a super fanboy, and he. Like he's come up, we've been together since he was two. Like I love him. Even his mom, like I'll call her and be like, hey, can I talk to Luke about this? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's and awesome. like I, I work really hard at like all those relationships and I love him so much. I love that he loves this and he gets into it and like he wants to read the monster manual. He oh. wants to like hear these stories and sit and it's like, we're learning it together. It's a new phase for me in a, and like for him too. So it's great to have that thing to share and for it to be Dungeons and Dragons. And when I do things, I don't do them half-heartedly. Like I live my life to care and be able to care about this is awesome. I love that. Me I too. love that. I'm so excited that you finally got to play uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, and that you are uh, embracing it as much as you can. And uh, it's it's just great. I don't know. I, I, I'm getting such a, Happy, Happy feeling. Yeah, right? I feel like this has been like an hour-long whirlwind of uh, so many emotions. Most of them love. <laughs> it's Thanks great. Thanks for having me. I'm so grateful. I like Thank you, B-Dave Walters, for being. Yeah. I promise I he... will name my child after you. You have a deal. <laughs> well, wait, is it going to be B-Dave? Is that going to be? <laughs> B-Dave, Dave, B, what? What do we got? I mean, I would add like an extra B just to be contrary. Like, oh, B-B-Dave. 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 I like that. <laughs> we B- did a... Like B-B-Dave. <laughs> yeah, like B-B-Dave. I want to be B Dave, like B B Dave, B B Dave. Oh, that's good. I like that a lot. I like we, that. We did his show last week, so it was really exciting. And we did a panel at WeedonCon. We did uh, Ask Your Black Geek Friend. We did uh, things and so I don't know if it, like can I say that? But sure. um, yeah, we yeah. Did it. And um, I was telling him at the thing, I was like, I'm obsessed with Dragon Talk. I listened to your episode. It was so cool. I love that they love you like I do too. And he's like. <laughs> He's like, oh, I know the dude. And I was like, yay. And then he's like, you're going to be on Dragon Talk. And I'm like, you guys should have seen my face. Like, I screamed and was jumping up and down in this house. So Aww. excited. And predict- <laughs> it was I perfect timing. It was perfect timing. because of- I even got out of a meeting so I could stay and be <laughs> That's on That's right. You're skipping it right now. Totes. Look at you. I told Nathan it was really, really important. I'm like, but this is a guest I really, really want to talk to. Please, can I skip the meeting? It's like, okay. Thank you guys for caring enough to talk to me. I'm like, that's so exciting. We love it. We love it. How can people, I mean, obviously we can watch Sirens. Uh, where Where can people find out more about you and uh, all the cosplay you're doing and then get to be super fans for you so they can watch you during the stream of Many Eyes? Yay. Um, so my name is Christina Ariel, K-R-Y-S-T-I-N-A-A-R-I-E-L-L-E. And you can find me at Christina Ariel on Instagram, at Christina Ariel on Twitter. Um, my Twitter is fun. I like to say <laughs> things about things and stuff and it's great but you can find me there you can find me on sirens of the realms on tuesday also don't be sure to tune or be sure to tune in for inkwell society on wednesdays as well and b dave has his own show coming out on mazer as well which is super exciting he's going to actually be dungeon mastering that um yeah but you can find me christina ariel on all the things um i either have an afro or braids it's kind of never usually in between unless i'm storm in which case i have white hair but yeah, um, <laughs> um, look for Angel Wings at the Stream of Many Eyes. I will Angel. be there. I'm really excited to say hi to all the people and the stuff and things. That is awesome. I Yay. can't wait. We're going to give you so many high fives and hugs. Uh, it's going to be great. I'll have to spread one from Shelley to you. Yes. Uh, and you give me all the gossip, uh, and I will make sure to remember it a little bit to tell her. And I'll back. give you gossip, too. All right. Nice. Okay. Well, I will be I'll Spend. be your conduit for gossip. Yes, do it. <laughs> it was so great to have you on, Christina. So Thank good. you. Uh, I love your enthusiasm, and uh, I can't wait to uh, meet you at the stream of many eyes. Love Thank you. Thank you so much. You're the best. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. We'll stay live on the Twitches for a second. She's the best. She is the best. That's and I also so nice. love B. Dave. I love B. Dave as well. So it would just make sense that... The two of them, uh, it was just a random together. email exchange this weekend was like, oh, Christina's a big fan. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm a big fan of her. And she's going to be at the stream of many eyes. It's the perfect confluence of events so to good. get her on. And uh, I, I love it. So She is a great advocate, you can tell. Absolutely. For for, uh, for Housewives as well yes. as for Dungeons and Dragons. I feel like I, feel like I met my person. <laughs> really excited. She, she speaks your language. She totally does. She totally does. And you, th- those were some good, good efforts to stay with the conversation. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> bring it all home again. Thank but you for, yeah. uh, uh, yes. This could I, be I my wanted, favorite episode. It, it is a good episode because yeah. the uh, level of, uh, as I, I've said a couple times, but the enthusiasm yeah. was there totally. from you, from me. Maybe a little bit from Christina. <laughs> oh, just a little. She probably <laughs> caught it from us. It's true. Yeah, yeah. it's we're, it's hard because we're infectious. We're super conducive uh, to enthusiasm in, for in sure. In a good way, infectious. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Speaking of which, that rash isn't really going away, is it? Wait, what are you talking? <laughs> Do you I have a rash? Like, I don't know. I've, I've been looking at my. You might want to put some lotion on. Do that. I have a rash? Oh no. <laughs> I you haven't told them? I haven't told them. Uh, the stream of many eyes is going to be tons of fun. I think you guys will love it. June 1st, 4 p.m. Pacific time here on twitch.tv slash DND. We'll kick it all off with a tour of the sets as well as a roundtable discussion of what is the adventure to come what? and then get right into the Dungeons and Dragons live sessions. Uh, June 2nd is going to be crazy off the hook. I think we got seven Dungeons and Dragons sessionings, uh, sessionings happening Session that ends. day. And then on Sunday, we are selling tickets for you to come in and tour the sets yourself in person in Los Angeles at the studio you'll get tons of dungeons and dragons merchandise the ability to buy more dungeons and dragons merchandise from well. a lot of our partners and watch a two-hour live performance of dungeons and dragons uh from some of your favorite streamers some of the biggest names playing dungeons and dragons now uh it's gonna be tons of fun so uh if you're interested go to dungeons and dragons uh website which is at dnd.wizards.com slash s-o-m-e uh, you can find out all the information there and purchase tickets. Uh, we can't wait to see everyone. It's going to be a experience you don't want to miss. Nope. Faux show. Nope. All right. Uh, hey, this can serve as our outro a little bit, I think, right? I feel like this is. If you quit breaking the... Uh the fourth wall. Dang it. We just did <laughs> cut this part out. Uh, Shelly, how can people get in touch with you? How about Twitter at yes. Shelly Moo? Yes. Or Avalon Hill That's at Avalon Hill. Number two. And Avalon can, Hill 2. And they can find out all about uh, the games that you've got coming out? Betrayal Legacy. Yes. Access and Allies and Zombies. <gasps> zombies too. Zombies. And then maybe another one that we haven't talked about yet. Maybe. That sounds like there is another one that my we haven't babe. talked about that might be coming out. Might be. Maybe. Might yeah. be. Uh, yep. Uh, you just, look at you. Yeah, I don't know. just causing I'm mayhem. not like you just like... <laughs> ah, ah. Not like Greg Tito just breaking news right and left, spilling the beans. It's true. I do. I break. I break news and wind uh, with the <laughs> same, the same vigor. <laughs> it's me. When you break news, you break wind. It's just that exciting. <laughs> I feel like that should be our new tagline. <laughs> breaking news, breaking wind. Here on the Fart Channel. <laughs> 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 this one is for Luke. Butts. You are the best fan anyone could yep. ever want. Butts and farts. Butts and farts. Uh, so um, everyone should follow me. I'm on Twitter at Greg Tito. Uh, I'm also on the Instagrams at Greg underscore Tito. But if you want to find out everything about what's happening with Dungeons and Dragons, including and do. the stream of many eyes, uh, go to DungeonsandDragons.com uh, or download Dragon Plus onto your mobile phones and get everything you could possibly ever get beamed directly into your eye sockets. Uh, many, many did eye sockets. Did you like that beam? I did. That was a really good sound effect. <laughs> oh, my eyes. Um, so I think there's only one thing left. Greg? Yes? Watch out. <gasps> Behind you. Ah! I'm dead.
Hi. We're back. We're back. I just wanted to tell all of you people watching on the Twitches that we uh, will not be doing a live recording for the next two weeks. Uh, uh, Next week is Memorial Day. The office here is closed. Plus, we'll be very, very busy getting stream of many eyes going in Los Angeles. Uh, And then we will not be recording live the week uh, following that on June 4th. Uh, because we will be recovering from the stream of many eyes slash traveling uh, into the uh, airplanes and travels there. <laughs> so I want to make sure you guys knew we recorded all these uh, ahead of time as much as we could possibly could. Um, but we will not be recording live until July, July, June 11th, I think, will be the next time that we will be uh, here in front of you and having a good time and giving you guys high fives at 2 p.m. Pacific time on Mondays. Okay. So okay. you got that? Yes. I'm sorry. Next up, we're going to record our intro, you and I, uh, with uh, our episode with Christina. Okay. Do you want to do that? I do. All right. Are we still recording, Ryan? Yeah. 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 Ryan, yeah. Super happy about sure this. Are, sure are, Greg. So I realize that this is not a Monday shirt. What do you mean it's not a Monday shirt? Well, it's a good shirt to just wear when I'm not on a live stream. Oh. I'm not pregnant. <laughs> I feel like I need to tell everyone that. <laughs> Cause look at, I mean, I. Look, Couldn't you like save a, that for the housewives one? I feel like that would then the the the, the bombshell to drop there. That I'm not pregnant. That you're not pregnant. <laughs> because I feel like, I mean, look at me. Yeah, look at me. That's like I a little pregnancy. Yeah. And plus, my posture is bad. <laughs> when you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa baby, uh, oh, right. I almost really fell. I'm so glad the. <laughs> but. <laughs> That would have been bad for the baby. Oh, so the, the hormones are making you come see yeah. so, I'm so dizzy. <laughs> this is why I've gained 45 pounds. Um, We're going to do the intro, ready? Shh. Welcome to Dragon Talk. I'm singing uh, this intro. You are inspired by our guests. That's exactly right. I am Greg Tito. This is Shelly Mazzanobo. Yep. That we is. have uh, Christina Ariel coming onto the show. I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. Uh, she is a uh, cosplayer. You might have seen her cosplay as uh, Wonder Woman. She's amazing. She's an amazing cosplayer. I love all of her costumes. Uh, they make me happy on a visceral level. And she has the best hair. And she I has very good hair. Very, very good hair. Uh, she is on Sirens of the Realms, yes. uh, Dungeon Mastered by the amazing Satine Phoenix. Yes. Uh, and I think she's pretty new to playing Dungeons and Dragons, so I can't wait to uh, She's pretty find amazing, because she thinks playing Dungeons and Dragons is playing Dungeons and Dragons on a live stream. Right. Like and that's that's, that's like the new learned. the new Dungeons and Dragons yep. is all about that stuff, right? Yep. So it's crazy. Um, we are excited to meet her uh, at the stream of Many Eyes, uh, which is happening on June first, second, and third. Is it a crazy event in Los Angeles in Hollywood? We will be unveiling the new Dungeons and Dragons storyline, and uh, a little bit of surprises for all of the heightened things that are happening uh, there. There's going to be an extravaganza of costumes, uh, uh, lots of actors, comedians, streamers, uh, musical performances. Come on. Uh, a sword play. There's going to be Stop all kinds it. of fighting. There's going to be uh, food trucks, um, amazing food trucks. things happening. Uh, That's you exciting. can... Yes, I know, right? D&D themed food trucks? Real food trucks made from real food uh, on a truck. Wow. It's going to be great. Uh, perhaps D&D themed. I'm not really sure what would that would be. Uh, you know, maybe Rust Monster tacos. Maybe. Yeah? Yeah. Behemoth uh, steaks. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's throwing things right, out there. That's not my forte. Most of them are. Yeah, no, you have to come uh, up with it. What are some vegetarian veg- monsters? Yeah, we have to have Veggie monsters. Veggie pygmy. Uh, succotash. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good dish. These are all the things that are definitely now happening because I impro- improvised them on this podcast. Wonderful. Uh, but if you want to have some veggie pygmy succotash, you can come to the Stream of Many Eyes yourself on June 3rd. It's going to be really kind of cool. We're selling tickets. You can come watch some of your uh, favorite live streamers perform Dungeons & Dragons live in the studio audience. Come uh, interact with the costumers. Take a tour tour. of the sets. And the set is amazing. Interact with all the amazing uh, D&D partners who are going to be there. Neverwinter is going to be there. Uh, You have this is. Yeah. I haven't heard this. No, this is great. Everyone here is going to be there. Uh, Codium Entertainment from Idle Champions is going to be there. Art and Arcana, the people who are uh, making <gasps> the book. Um, what? Art and Arcana, 10 Speed Press, they are going to be there. They're there too? Exactly. Beetle and Grimm's Pandemonium Warehouse, which uh, Matthew Lillard uh, alluded to last week. They are going to be there. 
Uh, it's going to be crazy. Roll20 is going to be there. They have a, an amazing map store ready for you to explore. That rhymes a little bit, and I didn't even know it. That's amazing. It's going to be cool. I didn't know all yeah. of that. You might even be able to get a drink at the Yawning Portal. Just saying. <sighs> yeah. Like a real drink? Yeah, from Dernan himself. What? Yeah. The real life Dernan. We imported him in from the Forgotten Realms. It's happening. This thing is getting cooler and cooler. It is. Please buy your tickets. People. Yeah, go to dnd.wizards.com slash S O M E. On a Sunday in LA. That's going to be that fun. I mean, you know, there's not like there's famous people there or anything. Or like, there's nothing to do in LA on a Sunday. This is, this is true. <laughs> there's absolutely, in the so, entire metropolitan area, if I'm you're pretty there, sure. Like, what are you going to do? There's like, no other brunch? activities. There's no, everything's <laughs> closed in L.A. on Sundays. What are you going to do, brunch? you going to go have brunch with celebrities? <laughs> Stupid. Go be in the sunshine or something? Why don't you put on your D&D costume, come and be a part of the uh, community, and uh, get some awesome Dungeons & Dragons merch while you're at it. I will. And I'm sorry. I interrupted you when you were going to say the URL, which is kind of important. Thank you, Shelly. Sorry. I got so excited. You ready for it? Yeah. It's dnd.wizards.com slash... S O M E. What does the S O M E stand for? Stream of many eyes. Woo! Woo! I feel right. like I was on Wheel of Fortune just now. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to solve the puzzle. <laughs> Stream of many eyes. Oh my God, we should totally do an integration with Wheel of Fortune next time. That'd be really fun. We can get Vanna. We can get. Pat she Sajak. totally plays D&D. It, she plays a lot of d and I know she does. Uh, I uh, think we need to also talk about Morden Cannon's Tome of Foes. Yep. It is out now in game stores. You can get two different covers. One is the standard cover uh, created by Jason Rainville. The other one is an alternate cover created by Vance Kelly. Uh, we've had some reports, though. I just want to make sure everyone knows who's listening to the podcast that the uh, covers from the alternate cover by Vance Kelly are damaged uh, from some folks who might have them in game stores. You should go check with your individual game store, though. It might be okay. It might be perfectly uh, uh, awesome, and uh, you should uh, check with them. But if you do get a copy that is no bueno, uh, customer service here at Wizards of the Coast will Standing replace it if, if for any reason if you are unhappy with how the cover looks. Basically, some scratches and dents uh, uh, and maybe some bowing Scratch with the covers. Dents. Yeah, the, the covering uh, didn't uh, uh, come out as, as planned. Uh, so, uh, so it's like an alternate, alternate cover. It's an alternate, alternate cover that will be worth even more money potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you can do is contact customer service, send in your copy, and as soon as we have uh, new, better, and uh, undamaged co uh, copies, we will send them out to you. So uh, apologies for anyone who may be unhappy with their cover, but it shouldn't diminish the amazing fun no. that people are already having posting uh, on the social media about what is in Mordekinian's Tome Same of Foes. great content. Tons of lore. Uh, from uh, all the way from the Demons and Devils of the Blood War uh, to the Gith uh, Yankee and Gith Sarai, Dark Elves and Elves, Duergar and Dwarves. So much amazing content is in there, including more than 150 new monsters, new uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. There's a lot there uh, to uh, absorb. So uh, go to your local game store uh, if you still can uh, and try to pick up whatever copy you want, and then uh, it'll be available everywhere on May 29th. That's just two days before the stream of many eyes, folks. <sighs> Tuesday, May 29th, uh, three three days, uh, if I'm if I'm correct. Thirty days has a turn. Yeah, right. Exactly. I had to I had to do that in my head. Yep. Uh, so uh, we're we're super excited about uh, what's coming out of that content, and I hope you are too. Uh, if you want to find out uh, people who are playing some of that fun Morning Kings Tomophos content, go download some of the fun podcasts on our Dungeon Dell feed yes. uh, go search Dungeon Delve in iTunes or, or, or Google Play or wherever you get podcasts there are more than two dozen active play audio live played podcasts with content from Morning Cannon some of those in it uh, they did a fantastic job uh, shout out to Victoria Rogers from the Broadswords who helped assemble this amazing crew uh, they did good work and uh, hopefully you find one or two new podcasts to put in your rotation and listen to yep. on uh, on the reg as they say uh, so good stuff there great content uh, as Sh Shelly said last uh, time there's no shortage of no. DVD content out there no don't uh, let anyone tell you otherwise yeah exactly don't let them don't let them because you have evidence wrong. of so much out there to show them prove them wrong prove them, prove them wrong yep. uh, speaking of uh, podcast feeds the Dice Camera Action podcast feed should be up and running 
So you could check that out as well. Uh, you can get all of your Dice Camera Action episodes in audio form there. I believe we have the first season. Uh, so I think the first 32 episodes are up. Uh, we also have season three and are starting to put up season four. Uh, we're working on getting season two all up there as well. But if you want to jump into Dice Camera Action and want to check out the audio uh, of those uh, video things that are streamed on Twitch at 4 p.m. Pacific time on Tuesdays, you can download them now uh, as soon after they are broadcast That's uh, really in cool. audio form. Yeah, we removed those ones from Dungeon Delve. So if you're looking for all those episodes, you can look for them on cool. the uh, Dice Camera Action. I might. I might do that. Yeah. I'll start have to listening. take into listening to podcasts yeah. on my way home. Because all of the Dice Camera Action crew will be going to the Stream of Many Eyes. They will be performing twice in costume, all four cast members. All together. All together. It's going to be great. Uh, so I, I can't wait to see that and uh, see where their uh, guest takes them. I don't, I don't know if I'm ready to talk about who is going to be guesting them on Sunday. Uh, but they are one of the ones that you can buy tickets to uh, for Sunday, June 3rd. With the special guest? With the special guest. All right. Yeah. We'll be talking about it Will soon. Will you tell us before? You know what? Why don't I just tell you now? Oh, my God. Breaking what? news. Should I just tell you dun, now? Dun, 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 dun. Breaking news. Travis McElroy from the Adventure Zone Shut podcast. Up. We'll be playing his character Magnus in costume with the Dice Camera Action I Crew. I love him. Yeah. It's going to be great. No way. Yeah. Oh, also, that is awesome. Uh, Clint McElroy will also be joining the uh, first session on Sunday. That's right. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. He plays Merle in uh, the Adventure Zone. I don't think he'll be in costume, but he will be playing Merle, I think. Uh, and he will be playing alongside uh, uh, Sam Regal from Critical Role, Ashley Johnson from Critical Role, as well as Dallas and Jaffe from Critical Role, mm. and Matthew Lillard, all Dungeon Mastered by Mark Humes. So two amazing star-studded things uh, that you can buy tickets to on Sunday, That's June 3rd. That's very cool. Uh, again, that URL is dnd.wizards.com slash S-O-N-E. That's really good. That's really Did good. you just talk what over the URL get. again? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody needs to know that. Nobody needs to know. Just Google it. I Nobody did it again. Sorry. Nobody needs to what? know. If you don't sell tickets, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get real housewives. <laughs> <laughs> You're prepping. You're prepping for it. I love it. Uh, I think I've talked enough. Just say the URL again. I'm it sorry. is dnd.wizards.com <laughs> slash S-O-M-E. You ready? Yes. I'm going to drop some lore bombs on you with this Lori You Should Know segment about Janassi. Bing, bam. bong, bing, bong. <laughs> <laughs> That was only 45 minutes long. Was that the intro? That was an intro. That was 45 <laughs> minutes long. Quick, quick mid-tro. Quick tro. Quick tro. <laughs> Do you feel like you know everything you need to know about Janasi? Nope. All right. Well, you need to go back <laughs> and listen to that Lori Should Know segment. Nope. Need a little more information. All right. Please. Well, did you know that they are uh, descended from genies? That's all I'm going to say. You have to listen to the whole Lore You Should Know segment to really get more about it. But I think it's time for us to talk to our guest. Uh, here is our interview yes, please. with Christina Ariel. Yes. Tigner, let's do it. Done. Quick trope. Huh? I get it. You think we're all good? Woo! We got the in, mid, and out. Yeah, I, I asked, do you think that we're all good, Ryan? Ryan, do you think we're good? <laughs> 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 do you I think do you think Dax Shepard is a better interviewer? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Uh, yeah. Yeah, probably. Do you probably. know Dax Shepard? <laughs> <laughs> That's a callback to nobody, something nobody was paying attention to. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, my God. We're still. Yeah, we're still live. <laughs> we got, uh, you got to see the sausage being made uh, here, uh, folks, for this I one. I had to take my headphones off. My head was like burning. I hear you. Seriously, feel right here. It's like hot burning. Oh, my God. I can feel it from this far away. Yeah. Oh, I feel like I have a lump. <laughs> you should go get that checked out. <laughs> go to a phrenologist. They might be able to help. Sorry. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, we are full of giddy hilarity here on the Drun Dungeon Trucks. Oh, now I can hear you. The Dragon Talks. The Dragon Talks. Uh, we are going to be <laughs> uh, taking shots after this one uh, to celebrate. We are going to be not recording uh, for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> what is happening? Why haven't I done this? We've before? gone full uh, Kathy Lee Hoda at this I've been point. Drunk for four hours. 
hours. <laughs> Ow! The thing really like on my <laughs> on my wrist. Wait, I'm gonna try to get your. I just took one d4 of damage right there. <laughs> you did a d6. <laughs> oh god! Ah! Dad, we're dying. We did the outro already, but it's good. Uh, <sighs> thank you everyone uh, for subscribing and watching us all be nuts. So uh, we uh, appreciate everyone. <laughs> Uh, including uh, Lauren Urban uh, in the chat. Thank you so much. You have uh, always blessed us with your URLs uh, in the chat and keeping it going. So we appreciate you. She's in the building right now. So, of course, I have to say this, uh, and I'll give her a high five and a big hug. Uh, She's in the building. All. She's in the building. Yeah, that's right. Nobody tells me anything. Uh, so, uh, yeah, on. again, we'll be out for the next two weeks. We'll be back on uh, June 11th. And uh, we'll talk then. I have no idea what guest it's going to be. My but baby will... bump will be like <laughs> huge by then. <laughs> You're spreading that rumor all around town. Not pregnant. Bye, everybody. We Bye. will be back on June 11th.